We all want to be smarter photographers, and I've found out that one of the best ways to be a smarter photographer is to hang out with smart photographers. So I've gathered a group of some of the smartest photographers that I know to discuss a topic that has popped up on the latest volume of the Smarter Photographer video series. In it, we talk about discovering the mirrorless camera systems and how that has kind of impacted my own work. Well, I wondered how it affected other photographers as well as what are the tools, the photo pieces that we've added to our systems as the years have gone past that we wish we would have used sooner or would have been invented sooner because it may have changed drastically the pathway that our imaging has taken. Take a look at this clip from the video and you'll see what I mean. Mirrorless, just a camera? or more than that. Mirrorless cameras are a lot like DSLR cameras in the fact that they're just the tool that we use to connect the idea, the visual idea, with the way of sharing that idea on some sort of screen or some kind of print. Now, I really don't care about which brand of mirrorless camera. I just kind of enjoyed the whole process of discovering what they can do and, of course, what they can't do for my imaging. I'm not really fond of all the crazy gadgets and widgets found on a lot of different cameras and in fact we find that a vast majority of photographers pro photographers that use DSLRs don't even use 50% of the features and functions on any camera that they own so for me I want the ability to make my process as simple as I can and I got to tell you as a guy who's been photographing a lot of things for a lot of years when I added that first mirrorless system it expanded my vision my comfortability, if you will, on how I'm able to go from an idea to an image. Not only the exact image that I want to create, but it was the speed that really attracted me to the mirrorless system. When I take a look at the images and the people and the places that I've photographed over the years, actually decades, <laughs> of my career, I notice that there are a handful of significant tools that have kind of come into my process that have helped me make better better pictures. The first time we went into the big electronically controlled strobes, when we moved into the big inkjet printers that could really make a high quality print, those are all big deals. Those are all pieces that, in fact, I wish I would have added sooner to my process of creating images. For me, mirrorless cameras are another one of those pieces that I'm going to stick in place there in order to help me make those images faster and easier, better, and, you know, enjoy it a little more too. With me today are four terrific photographers. As you can see here, we've got Carol Schlintz up in Milwaukee, just outside of Milwaukee, right, Carol? That's correct. Hello, Will. Good to see you. And of course, the famous, famous photographer, Mr. Chuck Jones, good friend of mine in Southern California. Hi, Chuck. Howdy, Will. Good to see you, pal. Good and to Miami Bay. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Miami based editorial and advertising photographer and the guy from Big Picture, wait, Small Camera Big Picture, oh, Julio, I forget, what's the name of that darn website? Small Camera Big Picture. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'd know, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, the genius behind all things that is the Crockett Network, that is Mr. Tom Curley. Hi, Tom. Hi, everybody. Hi, Will. Good to see you. We want to talk about some of those tools, some of those software applications, maybe even processes that we wish we would have started using earlier. I can remember handfuls of products when they were brand new that I took a look at and I go, oh, those are ridiculous. So there's no way that I would use them. And I delayed and delayed and finally I tried them. And of course, bingo, everything worked out perfectly. And of course, I kicked myself because I wish I would have done it sooner. Let's kick off with Carol. Carol, give me one of the pieces, the tools of photography for you that you wish you would have started using sooner. Sure. Um, kinda, I, I made a list and the, the top one on my list is the Color Checker Pro Passport. I can't tell you how long I struggled with color correcting and getting it right and how long it took me to get it right. And then along comes this simple little device and poof, I can do in five seconds what it used to take me maybe hours. I shouldn't admit that, should I? Yeah, no, 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 it's true. Hours. <laughs> do you use the software utility that comes with that that plugs into, I guess, Lightroom is what I've used it on. 
I use it in Lightroom, um, and certainly I use that to get things more right directly into Lightroom. But then I try to take an image that has the the color checker passport in it in each lighting condition. And I won't say I'm perfect. I don't always get it. But if you get close enough, you can color correct the entire batch of pictures in one fell swoop. Yeah. And it's it's cut hours of tedium. <laughs> and allowed me to be more creative rather than tediously trying to get that purple shirt as purple as it was. I agree. I you know, that. for years we kind of poo-pooed the idea of photographers doing intense camera profiles for the input values of their cameras. Yeah, it's important if we're doing really super color critical work, but the vast majority of photographers to do camera input profiles, complete waste of time. With the exception of the color checker passport from uh, the X-Rite folks, it made that process very simple and I thought they did a great job with it. Mr. Chuck Jones, you know every time I'm with you buddy I learn something. Why don't you tell me what's the top of your list of items that you wish you would have started using sooner? Class 10 SD cards. <laughs> <laughs> the speed? Is that what got you? Speed. <laughs> I used to hit the buffer continually uh, and the SD, SD cards were a great invention. Uh, TF before that was, eh, okay, you know, bending pins and everything like that. Uh, but then when they came out with the Class 10 cards, I mean, it was to, it was just like heaven. It's like shooting a whole new camera. Yeah, the so faster much. the card, the better. Right on. So much faster. That, that's, a, that's a great tip. Julio, give me one on your list, will you, pal? Sure. Um, that's easy. It's my OMD. Oh, this is a cheap plug for Olympus cameras. This is not right, dude. <laughs> it's the first. It's the first like close to pro mirrorless camera I've had, and I just I just love it, man. It's uh, I wish I I wish I discovered mirrorless cameras like three years ago. I I think that at that time would have been a GH2, but um, you know, they're makes life a lot easier and photography more fun. I made my whole blog based around mirrorless cameras. Yeah. And what is it about the OMD? Because I know you've got a handful of mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. What is it about the OMD that gets you? I think the speed and the in-body stabilization I like a lot. Um, but it's it's just fast and I can see things right away and I can shoot with it quickly. Now, I just finished my first job with the Fuji X Pro 1. And this thing is bad to the bone. It's cool. Yeah. It's it's a photographer's it's a photographer's camera, um, but the OMD is kind of like a camera from the future. So, you know, I feel like I got kind of got the best of both worlds. And the hardest thing about my shoot today was deciding which one I was going to take. And wow. I took both actually, but I shot it with the Fuji. Stop bragging, first of all. This is you know television. We're not supposed to be bragging about all the cool toys you got there. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Curley, you have a wonderful, wonderful career of working inside the photo industry, of course, uh, all those years with Fujifilm, but you got a chance to work with all kinds of photographers and go out, because I know we, we've explored the deserts and shot some pretty cool pictures, and you are quite a photographer yourself. What Thank is you. the top of your list for items you wish you would have had sooner? Well, uh, back when I was in corporate world, I was on a PC on Windows, and I found a wonderful product called Pro Show Producer. Used it and loved it. Well, I wish I had known when I switched to Mac, I went all Mac three years ago, that they have a product called Pro Show Web, and it's browser-based. I wish I had known about this uh, sooner than you are, discovering it uh, just within the last year. You are so right. Pro Show is one of these apps that is PC only that you install on your computer and it does a wonderful job of auto editing photos and video clips into a wonderful e product. And for years, this is another one of those products that I skipped for, you know, I'm more of a Macintosh guy. Plus, all the content we write on shootsmarter.com has to be both. Mac and PC cross-platform, so we had to pass on what is a really terrific solution, of course. Then they make a web-based version that I use pretty much every week. A lot of my e-product delivery comes through ProShow, and I agree, great, it's inexpensive, yeah. super easy to use. Yeah, I use it all the time. I use it for client work, I use it for family and sharing, and volunteer work, too, with some local organizations mm -hmm. that I help out with, and they think it's amazing that I can do this. 
I try to tell them it only took me 10 minutes to make that little slide show, but they don't seem to believe that. But well, the, well, the fact that it's on iPad now, too, is rocking. Big deal. A couple of weeks ago, I turned on one of my photographer friends to pro show, Carol. Would you care to share about your cool, uh, uh, what was it, water skiing event, right? Yes. Um, it was the second thing on my list, actually, was pro show web. Um, I was using a competitive product that gave me no control whatsoever of my transition. It's okay to say. What was it, Animoto? It was. Yeah, it's okay. I we like Animoto. I not bash anybody. No, no, and, no. I mean, I still have my subscription there, but I haven't gone back since I got Pro Show Web because it's just so powerful and easy, and I'm kind of new to adding the video stuff in, so I was a little... Um, tentative at first and you saw my first effort it was okay but the clips were too short and the the transitions kind of messed with them but um, as I've gotten used to doing it uh, I think I'm doing a whole lot better and I got a standing ovation at a recent event and every time it was a tournament every time they switched from one country to the next you know I would title it you know, Team China, Team Canada there would be a lot of clapping when it started and a whole lot when it ended. Right on, right um, on. People were just so excited. And it was that little bit of video that came into each one that I think just sparkled the whole thing up. So it's not just Pro Show Web. It's being brave enough to shoot some video. Um, that, that was a big deal for me, too. Well, I wish I had started a little sooner. Well, I got to say that I am extremely proud of you for <laughs> jumping into a real job and not so much taking my advice, but following your path. And that was to start adding an element of motion into your work. I mean, you're not in New York City or Chicago or Los Angeles. You're in a much smaller marketplace. And if your customers respond as positive as, as I see mine, and I know that you are with yours, to video, adding some sort of movement to the products that you sell. Not that there's anything wrong with selling still photos. There's not. But the era of hybrid imaging is upon us. If Carol up in Milwaukee can get a standing ovation when she releases for the first time ever a hybrid imaging piece, an e-product, if you will, I think that speaks volumes for where the rest of the photo industry needs to go. The smarter photographer is looking to grow as an image maker, constantly improving their imaging process. Sees every phone, frame, tablet, and computer screen as a great place to put pictures. Still a little nervous about all this video stuff, but it's okay, we'll help you. The Smarter Photographer is a new video series presented by 22 super talented photographers and two that are maybe not so talented. Oh, and my dog. The Smarter Photographer is Focus on the smarter ways of shooting, shaping, showing, sharing, and even selling your photo, video, and audio files through the web. Prints, phones, Facebook, iPads, <laughs> computer screens, and much more as we move into the hybrid imaging era. The Smarter Photographer is $25 on DVD or stream to any screen at any time. Each volume covers the latest, greatest ideas and simple solutions in photography. Volume 1 features fresh info on choosing and using online gallery systems instead of plain old websites. Lynette Kent's top 10 reasons why we should probably all be using Lightroom 4. Photographer Julio Shurio shares the imaging secrets in the hybrid hot seat segment. Should you be thinking about replacing your DSLR with a mirrorless camera? We'll introduce you to our recent results on using LED lighting instead of flash for event photography and plenty more. The smarter photographer is guaranteed good. If you watch it and you don't think you got your 25 bucks worth, just email our customer service and pick out any of our 72 different other videos, even the $39 ones. The future of photography is hybrid, less fuss and more fun. Hey Chuck, how long have you been making hybrid type of products for clients? Oh boy, uh, years. Years, uh, probably five, six years. Uh, yeah, you started early, right? But you're doing everything by hand. You're using Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, those kind of things? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I started, actually, I started video production back in the late 70s. <laughs> wow. 
wow, <laughs> that, they, that shows how old you yeah. are, man. <laughs> I edited with uh, open reel uh, oh. half-inch tape decks with paper clips and uh, a, a knife. That's almost exactly. as painful as the old days when we have to use dissolve units between slide projectors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let me tell you one of the items that's on my list. I am big into inkjet prints, and as you can see back behind me there, that is an inkjet print that's on the wall in my home studio. That's the set that you see on the television shows. Well, I, I'm into quality inkjet printing, and once upon a time I was introduced to printing through a piece of software called Image Print. And Image Print was really expensive, a couple thousand bucks for software. My problem was I'd buy a new Canon or an Epson or an HP printer and it came with software. And basically we'd throw that software away, install this new piece of software, and the difference between not only how beautiful my prints were, but how quick it was to change papers as well as other functions inside the printing, I kick myself. I really do. I wish I would have spent that $1,500 much sooner because I probably would have made a heck of a lot more money and I know I would have gotten bigger into inkjet printing too. So image print, that's high on my list there too. Carol, you had number two as pro show. What's your number three? Um, it's a toss up. It, mirrorless cameras are in there, but we've covered that already. I'm going to go with, actually I wrote it down last, it's painter. Because one of the things that I added to my mix recently is hand-painted images. And when you throw one or two of those into a slideshow, um, it really gets the tears going and tears in my world, in the portrait world, equate to mom spending money. Um, as crass as it is to say right out loud. Yeah. And I just wish I had started earlier in my career doing it because it's taking me a while to get good at it. But I love doing it and I love adding that variety and I think it kind of comes back to why the video thing is so important to me because it also adds to those slideshows and to that variety of product. And it's product that all the mommy cams can't capture or create in the end. Wow, excellent um, point. And, and I agree with you, Carol. I think photographers that spend energy kind of complaining, maybe even whining, sorry about that, about moms going to Costco and buying a camera and ripping off their business, I think that they're completely wrong. I think they need to take a look at what they can do that other people can't do. And it's all about the photographer, not the camera that that photographer's holding on to. So, don't mean to be on a, on a platform there, and I know the economy's hit a lot of photographers hard, but if you're watching and you're one of those people that's in a, a, a region that's hit hard by the weekend photographers, jump in there, pros, pull, roll up your sleeves, get into hybrid imaging because the rest of the universe is not. Chuck, give me another item on your list, my friend. For me, it's probably After Effects, believe it or not. Uh, adding motion graphics and moving graphics uh, and in with the hybrid imaging uh, and with the sound, sound is very important. Uh, integrating sound into the productions and getting that right. Uh, sound probably is 60%. And After Effects just works so nicely to put it all together. It's a steep learning curve, but uh, it really does, does make productions that stand out. That's right. I remember the first time I saw Adobe After Effects and saw what it did with animating text. And it is a television grade tool, and of course it's like Photoshop, the deeper you get into it, the deeper you <laughs> realize it is. Uh, how many it's hours do you think you've got into Photoshop. learning After Effects, Chuck? How many? I'm sorry? How many hours do you think you've got in total learning After Effects? Oh boy, uh, well, probably over a thousand. Uh, it's like Photoshop, I mean, uh, it's, it's one of those things that when you first pull it out of the box and first install it, you look at the screen uh, and you stare at it dumbly and you go, what do I do with this? <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of good videos out, there's a lot of good web tutorials out, Adobe has some very good uh, training materials themselves. Uh, it's not a, an inexpensive package, like Photoshop's not. Uh, but it is a very professional tool, and it is what the big boys use. It is. You know what? I discovered that lynda.com has a whole bunch of After Effects and other editing tools, tutorials. It's very inexpensive. I think it's $15 a month, and I've learned a ton from lynda.com. Julio, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot from Julio Shorio. Julio, give me another item on your list, sir. 
LED lighting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there? That's a, it's a little uh, light called a Z96. Uh, I got like four of these. They go together like Legos actually make bigger panels and then you got magnets on your filters and you just, there you go. And now I got a full O filter on there. But LEDs are a little funky right now for the color. So they're not for every subject. But if you need to, for video, they work really well. Um, and what's cool too, and I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about this, is if you want to shoot an HDR portrait, LEDs are the way to go. Because with, uh, with HDR portraits, you can't change your aperture, you change your shutter. And you can't change your aperture and change your flash and try to get an HDR. It's just going to be a real long and, and painful shoot. But if you, have, if you have your LEDs on, you shoot, and you shoot an HDR, you can get a really cool HDR portrait for a different look. Um, certainly it's not for all looks, but it's a different look. And then of course, if you, if you got your LED light and you start using that little red button right there, people, you can make really cool HD video. Don't fear the red button. It's not an ejector seat. It's, it's, it's the <laughs> cool button. Okay. Do it's, not. It's the cool button. Do not fear the video button on your still camera. Boy, I, we can't say that loud enough. Can we? Yeah. Don't, don't fear it because if it, I think. That's like, if you don't mind me getting into my third one, that's my third one is video, is HD video. I wish I'd gotten into it earlier. I kind of dabbled in it with uh, years ago with the original Final Cut, but after having to deal with codecs and workflows and transcode, and I was like, man, peace out. I, I just don't, wanna, I, I don't want to, I put a ton of time in Photoshop, and that's enough for me and After Effects, but I don't want to talk about that unless I, you know, I don't want to cry on camera. But <laughs> no. um, what I love about shooting video with an LED light and a mirrorless camera is you can sh really shoot it just like you shoot your stills. You know, if you want to do a short form video, you shoot your still, you're already lit, just hit the red button and run about 30 seconds, 15 seconds, or even a minute of video. So you got a clip and then move on. It doesn't yeah. take that much time. And it's just, again, j just hit the red button, man. You won't, nothing, no lasers come out of the wall or nothing. You, you'll be all right. One of the biggest obstacles for photographers to climb over as we move into this whole hybrid stuff is we are going to have the ability to shoot a piece of video or a, a still photo. And the only way to do that fluently is with LED lighting. So as much as I hate to see flash get pushed, pushed aside, it's going to. We're going to be lighting everything with LED rather quickly. And we're going to be doing some pretty neat things with the idea of even the boring corporate portraits that I have to shoot for my clients. We've got some really neat ideas we're coming forward on how we're going to add a little bit of motion. And instead of asking the person to move, we're getting some neat effects with actually moving that LED light. So while we're shooting that boring picture of a lawyer and a banker, we're going to sweep that light around the front. We can only do that with LED. So I'm right on top of that with you, buddy. we got lots here and, of course, lots more to talk about in the world of LED in our video series. But before we skip over to LED, one on my list, one of the tools I wish I would have bought a lot sooner is the Quantum Q Flash. I jumped in about version 2, version 3, and realized it was so much better than slide-in speed lights, both for Canon and Nikon and even the METS flashes that I use forever and ever and ever. Uh, the ability to really beat up Q-Flash, their wireless TTL is in fact better than any wireless TTL with Canon or Nikon, with the exception of maybe the, you know, I like the Pocket Wizard wireless TTL system a lot too, but when we take a look at portable flash lighting here in my world, I've got a couple of cases of Q-Flash and images big and small we've done have really been, really been well done and expensive, you know, like anything else, pricey stuff, but boy is it good. Mr. Curley, give me another one on your list before we wrap it up, will you, sir? Oh, yeah. Well, I can't live without Lightroom. <laughs> I was I was using Picasa to, for my personal you know, family snapshots and stuff, and then I was using Photoshop for, for client work, for professional stuff. Uh, I don't use Photoshop anymore unless I need to layer text on something. I don't use the Picasa anymore. It's all in photo. It's all in Lightroom, rather. Uh, Light, Lightroom re really is tremendous, and the and the fact that it's only one hundred and fifty dollars, I oh. I just can't get over the, the 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 power that we can do with that, and of course all the plugins and the automation. Carol, is uh, Lightroom your go-to? Is that the center of your imaging process? 
Yeah, if you think about the, the for me, it, it was, I've been using it since version one. I do a high volume of images. I'm, I'm a terrible overshooter to begin with. We just did a football game. My husband took 300 pictures. I took 2,000. <laughs> you, you've got a problem. Overshooters Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, get over it. I'm, I'm kind of over it, and it's okay. Chuck, are you a Lightroom guy? Yeah, I've got uh, probably close to 200,000 images in my Lightroom database at this point. Wow. And do you use multiple catalogs, or do you use a couple big catalogs? I use multiple catalogs for shoots. I'll do a, uh, you know, segment shoots, and then my main archive, I use a uh, uh, one large archive uh, that lives on uh, a 12 terabyte radio. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's how I do it, too. Hey, Julio, thing, you're a Lightroom. Oh, go ahead, Chuck. Uh, one thing I do want to say, too, I've been uh, using something new that you turned me on to, Will, uh, Zenfolio. Uh, yeah. I... I've got to tell you, the integration with that with Lightroom and the ability for me running my own websites just to uh, <laughs> zip them right out of Lightroom, create the uh, the galleries on Zenfolio, and boom, they're up on the web. Uh, I mean, it's a workflow that can't be beat. Uh, yeah. Thank you for turning me on to that. That's, yeah. uh, that's a very interesting piece of software. You're I welcome. Agree more. You too, Tom. Oh, yeah. I use the plug-in right from Lightroom right to the Zenfolio galleries. We, we like the whole gallery system. Of course, that's a big component of the Smarter Photographer video series. And uh, not only do we like Zenfolio, we do, but we also like SmugMug. There are a handful of other ones on there, too. And if you are a SmugMug user, you will find that there are export modules that you can for free plug into not only Lightroom, but Photoshop and Aperture. And I think there's five or six more. So it feels like the folks who make gallery storage systems like Zenfolio and SmugMug understand that what we want to do is we want to assemble this system. It doesn't matter if we're shooting a Canon camera or a Nikon camera. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter if we're using Lightroom or Aperture. What matters is we have the ability to have an idea as an image maker, create that image in either a still photo or a video, shape it, reshape that, and put it into whatever device we want to, meaning a print or send it over to an iPhone and create that whole process of being able to shoot for money or shoot for fun. Uh, one of the things that I wish I would have done a long time ago is make sure I complete every one of the shoots that I do, meaning go through and process those files and do the sorts and do the edits. And it used to be we were in such a rush to go ahead and get that job shot, even back in the film days, and get it into pages because we shot transparency film and get it to the client. Well, the way that we grow as a photographer is if we get the opportunity to take a look at those final images and try to see what our client likes and what they don't like, or if you're not shooting for clients, if you're shooting just for fun, take another look. Give it a week or so and come back to those images and take a look at them. Uh, I do notice that when I go on some of the meetup.com shoots with my local friends here and a lot of times I, I go low profile incognito and I don't want to be that Will Crockett guy from the TV shows I want to be the just photographer from down the street and what really bothers me is I see a lot of photographers they shoot files raw or JPEG and they don't do anything with them I think they download them from a card they put a label on them and then there they go but we can't grow as photographers unless we take a look at some of the ways we could have improved our photography and that's what we did today. We all have these products and these systems that would have really changed the course of how our photographic careers ended up and may have changed some of us who are watching that weren't pros might have made us pros or vice versa. Um, if we would have, <laughs> if I would have found out image print a lot earlier I might have instead of being a shooter I might have ended up just being a printer. Julio close us out here what is one of the areas that you're looking forward to in the future for our future product that's going to be something you're going to jump on sooner than later? Uh, wireless workflow, for sure. I, I want to go for my camera right online. I, I, don't, I want to bypass Lightroom. I want to bypass C1 Pro. If I can shoot and edit on my camera and get it into an iPad or an Android phone or whatever and get it online and start sharing with people or with my clients, then, then I, I'm, I'm going to work that much faster. And if I'm going to work that much faster, my life is, is going to be a lot easier. Wow. I, uh, I can't wait for all this wireless stuff to actually work and be nice and speedy. Wow. I think it's going to be but terrific. But you got to get it right in camera. That's the thing. 
So if you don't mind me following up, I'm waiting for like uh, raw to die and for people to not use raw as a crutch and to step up and uh, and, and be, be the kung fu master and, and not not just wear like a, a kung fu outfit. You know what I mean? I, I hate to say it, but do you know how much trouble you're going to get me in by saying oh. people who shoot raw are knuckleheads? That's where you're going. You, you can you can email me and we can chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm saying I'm saying that to the viewers. So if people are. Don't 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 direct the heat the will. Direct it over to me. You know, back in the day when you shot film, if you blew it, you blew it. You know, there was no Photoshop. The Photoshop was like a giant Fuji C forty one processor or E six processor or whatever. Now you got a lot of people and they can oh, I'm just gonna be sloppy and I'm gonna shoot and one of these days I'll get a good one. And you're, we're gonna see people going back to, hey, I got it right in camera and I went right online. And and you got the skills. You got to have the chops if you're going to break some bricks. That is true. And of course, uh, one of the other big reasons that photographers are resistant to shoot video and press that little video button that you were showing us is they are so dependent on raw auto processing to correct their exposure and maybe fill light values as well as white balance. And if they don't get it right in the camera and they press that video button and you've got a piece of video that's a stop and a half underexposed and the contrast is a little screwy and the white balance is amber. There's no way you're going to fix that, and if you do, it isn't going to be a whole lot of fun. So I agree with you, but, you know, I've been beat up by the raw mafia in the past, and I'm not looking forward to get punched in the nose again, so I'm going to let you take this punch if you don't mind. Bring it on, man. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> the smarter photographer is really into adding motion to your images. Hybrid imaging. Reducing post-processing time. One of my favorites. LED lighting. Mirrorless cameras. Shooting and sharing your images with ease. The Smarter Photographer is a video series. It's less than 25 bucks per volume and it's guaranteed good. No kidding. If you spend 25 bucks on one of these videos and decide it's not worth the money, you just send an email over to our staff and we'll get you a different video from our collection that you're going to like better. The Smarter Photographer is found on discovermirrorless.com. And guess what? Smarter photographers make better pictures. Folks, you are just so terrific. And thank you so much for being a sounding board for all my crazy ideas and sharing all this great info with our audience. There are hundreds of thousands of people out there that appreciate really every syllable that comes out across that uh, pearly white set of teeth you got there, Mr. Chuck. Can <laughs> look at you smiling there. You look like you just won the lottery back there. I appreciate it, man. So from ShootSmarter.com and DiscoverMirrorless.com, my name is Will Crockett, trying to help you shoot smarter instead of harder. And don't forget, smarter photographers make better pictures. And there is a lot of information on our latest video series called The Smarter Photographer, available at DiscoverMirrorless.com. Thanks, all. We'll see you soon.